I believe a, a major crisis uh, took place in the late 1700s. Uh, Christians in Europe knowledgeable of the geological record simply could not conceive at that point in time how the Genesis flood could possibly have produced so much geological change in such a brief event as the flood. And their failure to defend Genesis 6 through 8 as the explanation for the fossil bearing sediment record opened the door to naturalism on a grand scale. Well, um, it just so happens in the, in the providence of God that technology developed to detect submarines during World War II provided a crucial piece of the puzzle, previously unknown. And during the 1950s, maps of the seafloor began to become available. And it was uh, breathtaking. The results were breathtaking. Uh, discoveries, things that people never even suspected, uh, suddenly appeared on the scene. In, in particular, what is known as the Mid-Ocean Ridge System was what came, became known for the very first time. And notice this highly symmetrical Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Uh, it's the, this ridge is part of a chain of high topography some 40,000 miles long, running like a baseball seam through all the world, world's ocean basins. So immediately, Earth scientists began to puzzle as to what could possibly be the explanation for this feature, this major feature of the, of the Earth's surface. And uh, one of the, the, the most immediate issues was the, the age of this feature, the age of the rocks that are exposed on the, uh, on the ocean floor, especially the igneous rocks, but also the sediments. And uh, an astonishing discovery was made, namely the young age of today's seafloor. All of today's igneous seafloor basement rock has been formed since the first appearance of dinosaur fossils in the strata record on the continents. In, the other, in other words, the world's ocean floors are younger than a, a, a large fraction of the sedimentary record on the, uh, on the continents. So what are some of the methods that were employed to come to this conclusion? One way of, of getting a relative age, uh, age of, of rock in the ocean relative to the continents were fossil correlations between ocean bottom sediments and continental shelf sediments. The same uh, types of, of marine, generally small marine animals that have very distinctive shells, many of which only appear once, only in a brief uh, time period in the past, uh, make these correlations possible. So it was found that the, the age of the sediment on the ocean floor correlated to recent sediments on the, on the continental shelves. In addition, uh, there was a, a magnetic reversal pattern that was discovered. And this pattern occurs in lavas, uh, volcanic lavas on the continents. It occurs as uh, magnetic minerals uh, settle out, out of solution and, and appear in these sediment cores. Their, their alignments, their magnetic alignments can be measured and one sees a, a, a magnetic reversal pattern in the sediment cores and also in the, in the uh, basaltic basement rocks of the ocean floor. The, the, these magnetic directions are recorded. And uh, these correlations also indicate that the, uh, uh, the ocean floor is young relative to the continental sediments. And finally, uh, there were rocks dredged from the ocean floor and, and the radioisotope values could, from this basaltic basement rock could be compared with continental basalts. And again, it, 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 get, it confirmed this young age for the ocean. So this discovery that the ocean floor was young precipita precipitated a paradigm shift in the, in the earth sciences in the 1960s, a major paradigm shift. So how does this discovery affect our understanding of the flood? Well, it implies that all of today's seafloor has been formed since roughly the midway point 
of the Genesis flood cataclysm. If, if, the, if the flood is responsible for the fossils in the, in the, in the sediments on the continents, and the seafloor is, is younger than a, a good fraction of those sediments, it means that all this seafloor has come into existence, has been formed since the, sometime in the middle of the flood. It's, the logic is just that tight and strong. And so this implies that thousands of miles of continental motion had to have occurred during the flood. It implies that none of the pre-flood ocean floor uh, remains at the Earth's surface today. In other words, all the, the ocean floor that existed before the flood is missing from the Earth's surface. And these, these implications suggest the Genesis flood was primarily a tectonic catastrophe involving large-scale motions of, of rock inside the Earth. So, uh, Many, many Christians haven't really thought much about the mechanism of the flood. Many of them, uh, about the last uh, teaching they had on this subject was when they were four years old in Sunday school, and they learned the song about the rains coming down and the floods coming up. Well, that's fine as far as it went, but uh, I, what, this, what this data is telling us is that there was a lot more to the Genesis flood than simply uh, uh, rain from above and rising waters from below. So let me at this point uh, give a, just a quick tutorial on the large-scale structure of the Earth. With this uh, same photo uh, map I've shown before, let me focus on a number of features. One, that the continents uh, represent a layer of buoyant granitic crust uh, with a density of about 15% less than the rock beneath it, and also the rock that makes up the ocean floor, uh, about 20 miles uh, in thickness of this lighter rock. And, and, the, and the ocean basins do not have that granitic layer. So that makes these continents uh, buoyant. They float, if you want to think of it this way, like giant icebergs in the heavier rock. It makes them unsinkable, basically, this, this light layer of rock on top. These mid-ocean ridges, uh, it was quickly uh, realized, represent where pla two plates are pulling apart and new ocean floor is, is being formed as, as uh, hot material rises to fill the gap. And then what are known as deep ocean trenches, for example, uh, that exists, for example, off the coast of, of South America and Central America is, is where ocean plates are plunging into the earth, back into the earth. So uh, just noting those features, this is a, a close-up picture of what a, a, a spreading ridge looks like today, where these plates are, in today's world, are moving apart very slowly, uh, like an inch or two per year. And we have material from below that, that uh, rises to fill a gap. And uh, all this, this, this rock is cooled by circulating ocean water in the, in the cracks as this, as this rock cools. And so uh, very little magma actually reaches the surface, but it does uh, rise up and fill the gap between these spreading plates. And this is a close-up uh, depiction of what it looks like at an ocean trench where this, ocean, this cold layer of ocean plate is plunging back into the earth, carrying down a little bit of, of sediment. Most of the sediment is scraped off at the top, but a little bit, a little bit of sediment is left on the plate along with some water. That water causes the material to have a lower melting point, so when it gets down to sufficient depth, there's a great deal of melting. and we get uh, volcanoes, uh, typically, commonly. So the ring of fire around the Pacific is, uh, corresponds to where you see the melting occurring here. Now that's today's world, and uh, what I want to look at is, as a mechanism, a, a mechanism I believe is responsible for the flood, is a, uh, can be described by the term catastrophic plate tectonics. And in this case, these ocean plates 
sink very quickly, actually run away uh, as a result of an instability that can occur inside the, the deeper earth known as the mantle. And if, when this runaway takes place, the, uh, the, the surface is pulled down dramatically by kilometers. So this, this region where the plate is bending is, is pulled down uh, by many kilometers and uh, this process, uh, and as well as the continent, adjacent continent, is also pulled down and flooded. So we have, have some, when this happens uh, uh, a million times faster or more than it is today, uh, some, some dramatic things take place. Uh, and then at a mid-ocean ridge, instead of it being really a ridge, you have a deep valley as these plates are pulled apart rapidly and violent steam jets emerge from this deep valley uh, as, as, as this hot rock is rapidly uh, filling, filling the gap. So catastrophic plate tectonics uh, basically relies on the fact that ocean plates can sink because they are cooler and therefore denser than the, the mantle rock below. This 2,000 thick layer of rock below the, the plates is known as the mantle. It's uh, almost everywhere solid, not liquid, like a lot of people have been led to think. It's solid rock. And below that is the core, which is molten for the most part, a small solid inner core we know from seismology. So you, you can basically divide the earth into two main parts, a rocky upper part, about 2,000 miles thick, and then a, uh, a, a, a mostly iron, mostly liquid inner, uh, core. Anyway, the, uh, the picture is that the, uh, for this catastrophe that the ocean plates sink rapidly on the order of meters per second into the mantle. So before I go into some numerical modeling of this process, I, I want to uh, just quickly summarize some of the consequences uh, of, of an episode of catastrophic plate tectonics. One of the first things that happens is the cold ocean floor sinks into the mantle. It tends to drag the continents downward. It's replaced by hot new seafloor uh, with, with hotter material rising from below. This uh, hotter material has a lower density. It rides up higher than the old seafloor. It shallows the, the, the uh, ocean basins, uh, raising the world sea level and and flooding the continents. So we have molten magma rising to fill the gaps where the ocean floor is pulling apart and, and is sliding like giant conveyor belts into the Earth's interior. Steam generated from the hot rock at these ridges erupts as violent supersonic jets, uh, jets like this, uh, where we have water circulating down through the hot rock, uh, becoming supercritical. Uh, for, for, there, there's a supersonic uh, shock, uh, su supersonic velocities in these jets. Some of that high-velocity steam entrains uh, liquid water as it, as it uh, rapidly penetrates the layer of ocean water, and that water comes down as, as, as heavy rain. And this solves a major problem for creationists in the past of how we could uh, condense so much rain. Uh, here, the, there's no need to condense the water. It just falls down as, as uh, it ne never goes to a vapor phase. It, it falls to the earth as liquid water. Uh, as these ocean plates plunge into the earth at the continent margin, sediment from the pre-flood ocean bottom is scraped away and accumulates at the continent edges, provides a, a major source of sediment. Uh, as the hot rock from the base of the mantle rises and spreads rapidly beneath the ocean plates, the volume of the ocean basins is greatly diminished and the global sea level rises dramatically, as I've already indicated. Uh, intense water currents in the form of giant eddies and driven by the Earth's rotation arise over the flooded continental areas as the global sea level rises. I reported this at the 1994 International Conference on Creationism, a uh, chance discovery I made that these, these, uh, these high-velocity currents uh, arise spontaneously, able to transport uh, vast amounts of sediment, with, and they have great erosion uh, capability, and so uh, have, have velocities 
more than 100 miles an hour in these, in these large-scale currents. So that's able to, to erode and transport large amounts of sediment and deposit it oh, and, and form laterally extensive sediment sequences. So those thick sediment sequences are spread out in blanket-like manner over the emerged regions of continent. Uh, and to produce this layer cake uh, pattern of sediments over the continents. And of course, most living organisms perish in such a catastrophe. Some are preserved as fossils, uh, like these dinosaur bones. Uh, and thus we have a, a record of this catastrophe as these floodwaters encroach onto the continents at higher and higher top, uh, topographic levels in the continents, destroying successive ecological uh, regions on, these, on the continents. The flow of rock in the mantle driven by the sinking seafloor slabs moves the continents apart by thousands of miles and opens the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. So we have, for the most part, North and South America moving westward relative to Europe and Asia and opening the Atlantic Ocean and forming this mid-ocean ridge where, where the seafloor is spreading apart. Now, all of this is driven by the gravitational potential energy of these heavy seafloor slabs that have, a, have this natural tendency to sink. However, when they reach the bottom of the mantle, and when the hot, hot rock at the bottom of the mantle reaches the top, this uh, potential energy is uh, mostly exhausted. And when this happens, the runaway episode ends, Velocities and stresses diminish, extreme surface deformations relax, and the global sea level begins to fall. And I'm going to show a calculation in a moment, an animation, where uh, after this, uh, it shows this runaway uh, mechanism, and uh, after the cold material spreads out over the bottom, the hot material spreads out beneath the surface, the velocities fall very rapidly towards zero. So after this, the rot water rushes from the continents, erodes and reworks much previously deposited sediment. Uh, much of the, the sediment you see on the uh, left-hand side of this figure uh, was also on the right-hand side of the figure uh, and has since been eroded away. And almost certainly it was eroded away in the runoff stage of the flood, massive runoff from the continents. And uh, another feature, uh, another aspect of what happened after the flood, the zones of thick and low density crust, mostly re the, uh, the result of subduction at a continent edge, these, these thickened zones bob up like cork because of their buoyancy to generate the present day high mountain ranges. So whereas during this runaway catastrophe, uh, the, this continent edge was underwater, when the, when the uh, driving forces uh, become close to zero, this, this region where the, the crust, the low density crust has been thickened, bobs up to equilibrium and, and, and a result is a high mountain range like the Andes, the Alps, the Himalayas, the Rockies. Another result was the warm oceans uh, after the flood uh, lead to vigorous atmospheric circulation, increased moisture carried to high latitudes, and formation of massive ice sheets near the poles. And, and this map shows the greatest extent of the ice sheets in uh, northeastern Asia, Europe, and North America that would logically follow as a result of the flood catastrophe and the oceans getting warm during the flood.